Good morning, everybody. At least it's still morning for me. We've got a little bit of Seahawks news. We've got some waiver wire claims, and we've got some practice squad updates. So let's go ahead and go over it, mainly focusing on these waiver wire claims because that's kind of the uh, thing of significance because these guys are going right on the 53-man roster. We claimed two players. Claimed two players off waivers. So... That's the significant thing here. No players that Seattle waived were claimed. Brady Henderson's got the info right here. So what that means is that pretty much everybody that we let go over the last couple days is eligible to be on the practice squad uh, for this upcoming season. So expect to see a lot of those guys coming back. But uh, focus right now is on the two guys we picked up. We picked up cornerback Q Blue Kelly, a uh, Stanford product, if I recall correctly. He was a uh, draft pick of the Ravens that they just couldn't keep around. And linebacker Drake Thomas, I believe of NC State. He was a UDFA of the Raiders, who also couldn't quite find a roster spot. So those are our two waiver claims, cornerback and linebacker. We don't yet know who we're going to let go to make room. I would assume that Drake Thomas means that John Radigan's getting pushed off. Um, I don't think we need to carry five inside linebackers and Nick Ballore. And Q Blue Kelly, I'm not so sure. It Maybe we're looking to trade one of our other cornerbacks because right now we have seven cornerbacks on our 53-man roster. We definitely don't need that. We're already carrying one more than we needed. Now we're kind of carrying two more than we needed. So maybe we're packaging Jackson or packaging Burns or Trey Brown or somebody for something that's more than nothing something some asset that's like a conditional seventh round or conditional sixth round pick i don't know but i don't think we're going to go into the season carrying seven cornerbacks plus julian love who has cornerback flexibility so talking about the two players we picked up i actually scouted both guys this year i scouted both of them earlier before the draft i had my eyes on both i didn't necessarily covet both a ton but I went back and looked at what I wrote about both guys. So let's start with Q Blue Kelly. Um, this was the guy who I thought was a definitely a draftable prospect. And several big boards had him high. Several big boards had him as a day two pick. And the aggregate at the time that I did this evaluation had him in the early fourth. So this was a guy who slipped a little bit in the draft and ended up not latching on with the Ravens. But there's something here. There's no doubt about that. There's definitely something here. Six feet tall, 191 pounds, 32-inch arms, almost 10-inch hands, ran a mediocre 40, but he had a nice 10-yard uh, split, 149, 36-inch vert, solid, almost an 11-foot broad. So he's a very nice athlete overall. Um... In 2021, he played in 11 games, 58 tackles, 2 picks, 11 passes defensed, so a bit of a ball hawk. Not as good in 2022 overall, had a mediocre PFF grade, so the mediocre 2022 kind of killed it. But um, lots of collegiate experience was what I wrote here. Hold strong in man coverage, and if we're switching to man coverage this year, that's significant. He's good jamming receivers at the line, shadows receiver throughout the route, great protecting against vertical routes despite being in man coverage. Good ball skills at the catch point, got great acceleration, good in run support, and some good zone reps. However, the kind of recurring theme that I came back to on this guy was he is a man corner. He is ultimately destined to play press man. So at the time, I wasn't that interested in him. But if we're going to be playing more man this year, then that makes things very interesting in my opinion. Because I think he does have some potential in that area. He does struggle in off coverage and only limited evidence of zone competency. Some of his quick twitch movements are slow and awkward, falls for double moves, and will have to improve tackling. So he's willing, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak in run support. So that can be taught, right? You would hope that can be taught. So I wrote that he will probably find success in press man, but otherwise I wasn't really so sure. I didn't think at the time that he would fit our scheme, but if we're going to run more man defense this year, then... Honestly, I think he would probably have like a fourth or fifth round grade on him. At the time, I put sixth round grade for the Seahawks because of the limitations as his own corner. But knowing what I know now, this is not bad. And if we can get Q Blue Kelly 
on the right track here. He's got a chance to be another Carroll Reclamation Project. So, nice pickup. I just don't know who's going to go to make room for him. Again, we don't need seven cornerbacks. I, I don't think we need seven. Like, like Again, Julian Love has cornerback flexibility. It, it, you're basically carrying eight cornerbacks by some definition. Okay, so that's uh, Q Blue Kelly. Now I want to turn the page to uh, Drake Thomas, another guy who I did briefly evaluate. I didn't go super deep on him or anything, but North Carolina State. Uh, six feet tall, 228 pounds, so definitely undersized, but not necessarily critically so. He's got short arms. Um, testing was middling, 4'7", 40, 36 and a half inch vert, 9 foot 8 inch broad, so he didn't test terribly well. A um, couple of big boards had him as a 7th round pick. The aggregate had him as a late 7th round pick. So, draftable, but barely. He, I believe he did make it through UDFA and went to the Raiders. Uh, he was very productive these last two years for uh, NC State, however. I will certainly give him that. Over the last two years, played in 25 combined games, had 200 total tackles, a ton in the backfield, was very productive as a pass rusher, made a lot of plays in coverage in 2021, three picks. So, there's actually a lot of playmaking here. The last two years combined, in 25 games, he made um, 32.5 tackles for loss. That's well more than one a game, so very impressive stuff there. I wrote pros, works through blockers well, solid coverage abilities, can make plays sideline to sideline, excellent all around against the run. So there is definitely some stuff that is appealing here at the college level. However, he is physically weak. He is going to get pushed around by blockers if they can square up on him. And he isn't really going to be good in man coverage, probably just somebody who can handle zone drops. So my initial thought with him was he doesn't have the size or strength to hold up in a 3-4 defense, where you do typically have to be a little bit bigger and at least more capable of taking on blockers, although he does do some stuff to overcome that. Doesn't really have much upside. I looked at him as either a strong safety convert or a pure special teamer, and I had him as a UDFA as a special teamer. However... If he comes to this team in place of John Radigan, that's mostly what we would be asking him to do. Special teams, so I got no beef with that. I think he will be a good special teamer. And also, we have more information now. He was great for the Raiders in preseason. Played a total of 90 snaps almost. Had a QB pressure, 23 tackles. So he was getting a tackle on more than a quarter of his snaps. Five tackles for loss, which is a really impressive number. Ten stops, first among rookie quarterbacks, fourth among all linebackers. I'm sorry, not linebacker. Uh, I'm sorry, not quarterback. Linebacker. 29 yards allowed in coverage, which is really good for somebody who played 89 snaps, including 50 in coverage. QB rating allowed of less than 82. PFF grade was solid, 77.5. His run defense grade was really good, 83.7. And he chipped in four special teams tackles. So he was actually really good in the preseason. So, yeah, I think we can kind of safely say here that he increased his stock, but not quite enough to get on the actual team. So, hey, Drake Thomas, uh, if he replaces John Radigan, I'm feeling pretty good about that. So that's about it. That's what I got on these two guys. Those are your waiver wire pickups. We're going to start adding players to the practice squad. We already know as of this recording, Aesop Winston Jr. coming back to the practice squad per Michael Sean Dugar. And Levi Bell, this is a big one right here per Michael Sean Dugar again. Levi Bell is coming back to the practice squad. So we uh, he, he uh, ran through the gauntlet and came back on the other side. So good news there. We're going to get to have him for at least a little while longer. Awesome stuff. See you guys later. More practice squad news coming later. Go Hawks. That's the update.